Good evening, Slide Roll fans. Uh, I'm making this video for Chris at the Old Iron Shops. Uh, check out his YouTube channel. Uh, Chris um, has a hobby of restoring and using vintage machine shop equipment. And uh, I checked out his channel today. It's an excellent channel. It's got lots of videos, really cool explanations, and uh, seems like a pro at what he does. Uh, he was putting some comments on uh, some of my recent videos about the using a slide roll in some of his computations, uh, so I thought I'd make a little video. I'm not sure I, I have exactly the computation he wants, uh, since I don't know much about uh, working in the machine shop, but I'm going to take a stab at it, and he can uh, he can come on and see if it's uh, the sort of thing he's looking for. Uh, the main thing I'm concerned about for his application is, uh, does the slide roll have enough accuracy uh, for his uh, for his his needs? Um, so maybe this video will help him answer that. Um, I've got two similar, very simple slide rolls. The K&E Polyphase slide roll. Let's have a look at that. Uh, this slide roll goes through a lot of revisions over the years. Um, and I've got a very similar... So that's an American slide roll. I've got a very similar Japanese slide roll imported to the U.S. Uh, the Frederick Post uh, 1447 slide roll. Uh, this is, both of these are very common, very easy to find slide rolls in good condition. Uh, both of them have exactly the same scale set. Uh, here we have A, B, C, I, C, D, and on the uh, this old K and E, the, the K scale is on the edge here, and you use it with this little line here. Um, on the back of both slide rolls, you have uh, S, L, and T scales, and uh, the K and E has one hairline for reading it on the back. Uh, later versions of the slide roll don't have a hairline on the back, uh, and then the post slide roll has uh, dual hairlines. Um, but I'm gonna, I'm not gonna use those hairlines. I'm gonna flip the slide over. Um, let's use the post slide roll. I'm gonna use that because the hairline is easier to see uh, here. Um, let's do a couple quick calculations. So I'm gonna keep this as simple as I can. So for the first calculation, I'm gonna use the first two scales on the top, the A scale and the B scale. The A scale and the B scale are essentially uh, two copies of an identical scale. On this slide roll, the second copy is marked with all the numbers multiplied by 10, but on some slide rolls like this K and E, uh, the second copy is just an exact copy of the first copy. Okay, so these are two what are called decades of a logarithmic scale. Uh, the C and D scales on the bottom are a single decade scale. Um, you can use those when you need more accuracy, uh, but I'm going to stay simple and use A and B um, on this slide roll. Okay, so let's say you have uh, two pulleys connected, uh, maybe with some sort of uh, chain or belt, uh, or maybe you have the uh, the gears meshed together like this. Um, the same the same calculation is going to apply. Of course, you know the rotation directions will reverse for these gears. Um, uh, what you could measure here is either the diameter of the pulleys, uh, or the radius of the pulleys, or the number of teeth. You just have to be consistent um, in your measurement. Okay. Let's say that uh, B is uh, spinning, and maybe B is spinning at some speed, and, and A is spinning at some speed, and uh, you want one, I guess the one is going to be um, the smaller one to be spinning at 500 RPM, and the other one to be spinning at 80 RPM. Uh, so how should you set this up? It doesn't really matter which one is driving which one in this uh, calculation, right? Uh, it's a pure geometry problem. Uh, the idea is that uh, the proportion you need um, between the two speeds is the same as the proportion of the sizes of the gears, as long as you're measuring one of these things. Um, so 500 RPM over 80 RPM uh, should be the same as, say, the size of gear A divided by the size of gear B. Um, okay, so the way you'll solve this, uh, I've, I've labeled them A and B because I'm just going to use A and B on the slide roll here. Um, so I'm going to set 500 on A now, 500 can be read here at this 5 or here at this 5. I'm just going to call this 5 even though it says 50. Um, so sometimes we'll use the hairline, put that hairline at the 5. Then the B scale, which is just a copy of the A scale on the sliding part, uh, should be set to 80 or 8. Uh, see, I'm setting the 8 directly under the 5. Some people, even if there are marks for both of these things, they will just align the marks. This will get you the best possible alignment. Now, if you're interpolating between marks, uh, can we see that? If you're interpolating between marks, uh, using the hairline can often help. But you see what I've done is I've set the 5 directly over the 8 mark there. Okay. Now that I've done that, anywhere on the A and B scale uh, that I put the hairline, 
um, I'll read the same ratio as 500 to 800. Uh, so for example, if I move, uh, say, to 4, which I could interpret as 400, um, and I look under the 4, uh, what I see is 6, Point four. See here's 6.1, 2, 3, 4, here's 6, 5, and here's up to 7. So that's a 6.4 mark. Uh, but if I'm talking 400 on A, then I must be talking 64 on B if I'm talking about this ratio. Okay? On the other hand, uh, let's say if I, wanna, if I want something set on B, maybe 3.2. Uh, so here's 3. Uh, here's 3.2, a little after pi there. Okay. If I set 3.2 on B, up on A I see, eh, it looks like 20, it could be 20 and a hair, uh, depending. Um, so this could be about the same as 20 and 3.2. Okay, I moved the slide a little, let's correct that. Ah, if I correct my alignment there, 20 and 3.2 looks even better. Okay, let's, uh, let's do a final one. Let's say, uh, let's say we want 15. The trouble with 15 is, here's the 1, here's the 2, so 15 is here, okay, 1, 5. Uh, the problem is that, that uh, there's nothing under A there. Uh, the solution is that I can use uh, the other 1, 5, which is here. Here's a 1, here's a 2, here's 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm saying, look, I want size 15 on that pulley. Uh, okay. Then uh, if I set the hairline there, I see right above that on A, uh, looks like 93, and it looks like a hair under 94, so let's peg it at 93.9, okay? So you can either set, set the size you want on the smaller pulley on B, get the size of the larger one on A with the hairline, or set the larger one on A, get the smaller one on B. Um, and uh, you can just eyeball them if, if, you, if you feel like it. There's no need necessarily to move the hairline uh, once you've set the slide. Now let's just try another one. Uh, so what if I want 690 RPM to 335 RPM? Uh, then see 690 should be here, 690. Uh, see there's nine marks between six and seven there. Okay, and then I should set 335 on B. Uh, there's 3.5 on B, so there's 3.4, uh, there's 3.3, three, three, so it must be this mark. Uh, when you get the slide rule, uh, different slide rules have slightly different markings, you got to get used to uh, how the scale is marked on your slide rule. Okay, um, so let's just find something here. Maybe I want to set uh, the larger gear to size 100, that could be um, 100 teeth. Uh, so let's find the 100, that could be just at that 10 there, uh, or 1. Um, Notice you can also find it under this 100 here. You'll find the same thing on B. Um, if I look at that, it looks like about 485. So this could be about 100 and 48.5. Maybe that's not a good size because maybe I don't have a gear with 48.5 teeth. Uh, so maybe if I want it to be better than that, uh, that's not what I want to pick. Uh, maybe I want to search around until it looks like there is a good match. Um, let's see, maybe if I set uh, size 70 here, that seems like a pretty good match. You see, if I set size 70 on the smaller gear, then the larger gear, which, you know, is roughly twice the size, uh, looks like 1. This is 1, 5 here, so that's 1, 4. And then each mark between 1, 4 and 1, 5 on the slide roll is 2. So that's 1, 4, 4 that you're seeing there, not 1, 4, 2. Um, and that looks like a pretty good match. Yeah, see that? Okay.